Would you rather produce a movie or executive produce a movie? Well, in the television movie business, which I was in for 20 years, you really don't have a choice. You have to be both. You have to be the executive producer and the line producer. As executive producer, supplier, the person who's the studio, who the network is counting on for that film and who is at risk for deficit and who has put together the financing from international money and tax credits, you're responsible for the whole kit and caboodle So, and delivering what the person who's paying for it wants. So that's the executive producer side and the supplier side. But then on the other hand, you've got you to make sure there is no going over in television movies. So, uh, and probably in the independent feature business as well. You, if you've got a 17-day schedule or a 15-day schedule, you're finishing in 15 days. So that's the line producer side, is, is where do you spend the money? What I tend to find is the most enjoyable part of that is what does this movie call for? How do we move, you can't use a standard, well, this is how much we normally spend on wardrobe, this is how much we normally spend on you know, hair and makeup, this is what we normally spend on picture cars. You know, some movies require more of one or the other. Some movies require lots of extras, some movies require no extras. So you wanna make sure that you take the money available to you and put it on the screen. So we're always moving stuff around. We're moving it from, okay, we don't really need that many extras, so let's take that extra money and get more wardrobe. You know, the Heidi Fly story, which we talked about, was wall-to-wall wardrobe. I mean, there was so much wardrobe and lingerie and all that, which is all very expensive. So I had to find that money somewhere. So where was I gonna find the money? Was I gonna have less locations? Was I gonna have less extras? Was I gonna have less crew on some days where I could figure out a way to get the crew down? What was the way I was gonna be able to save that money? You also took a class at AFI from another producer, a gentleman who had been in the business for years. He was a producer, I thought I had read that. Okay, maybe not. When I was a student, we were taught the line producing business uh, from a working, just which is the same as it is now. So there was a working uh, UPM and a working AD, and it was a year long class on line producing. The first semester, we would take a script, a real script uh, that this UPM had worked on at Paramount, in fact, and break it down. So we would break it down and do and put a board together. In those days, we actually used real strips. Now it's all done on movie magic. But we had real strips, and we would put day exterior, night exterior, day interior, night interior, inserts, visual effects, and put those strips onto a board. And then he, we would bring it into class, and he would look at our board after breaking down. A, and so that was the first semester. And then the second semester, we would take that board with an AD who taught the second semester. And they were a UPM and AD that always worked together. And, and then we budgeted from that board. So by the time you finished your one year of the line producing class, you had broken a script down, boarded it, and budgeted it. And so by the time I graduated AFI, I could line produce pretty good. Has line producing and, and, and just executive producing everything changed? So going back to that time, are the, are the rules and the ways of finding money and, and, and cutting costs here and there pretty much the same or are things slightly different? I think the costs have gone up, and yet uh, efficiencies have gone way down. So, uh, you know, the, as I said, the barrier to entry is no longer money. So, you couldn't really make a television movie for a hundred thousand dollars. There just was no way between equipment and guilds and whatever, and just the cost of doing it. You just couldn't do it. But now people make movies that get released as features for $100,000. So the, the economies are, are there because of digital primarily. I mean, film was really, raw stock was really expensive and developing was really expensive. And, you know, just being in an editing room where you'd have to put uh, clips up on a hook where instead of just having digital, you know, it used to be, and I cut on film for my first five television movies, I think, we cut on film. And you would say to the editor, well, let's try it with, you know, a close up here and let's try this scene with the, let's go back to the wide and let's, let's get rid of these two shots in this scene. And then he'd say, okay, disappear for two hours or go get lunch or go get dinner or come back tomorrow. And that's what you do. And now you sit in an editing room on what we used to be an Avid and now Final Cut Pro and, and it's, well, okay, what do you think of that? And it's right there, right then, right that moment. So that's changed. What's the difference between being a Hollywood producer and an independent film producer? Well, I think a Hollywood producer has uh, more of a studio life. And studio life is very different than an independent life. Because studio life is, you have a deal at a studio and you bring them projects and it's either a first look or an exclusive deal and uh, agencies are feeding you material because they know that you have 
a straight shot to getting it financed because you're on a lot. And uh, so I think that's a Hollywood. It's a, a little bit of a throwback to the old days of the studio system. Um, you have the advantages of a you know a very muscular studio that's going to provide you with access to material and access to crews and sound stages and visual effect companies. And as an independent, you're putting it all together every time. It's Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. Let's put on a show. And it's you start from the very beginning, and you got to find someone to pay for the script, and you got to find someone to pay for the movie, and every little piece of it has to be put together by you. You. It's a giant Lego box of Legos, and you have basically no instructions, and you got to build, you know, a Hogwarts castle out of memory and uh, imagination. And so, it's all, you know, the independent life is the, you know, traveling salesman. You, it's every single day you have to be doing it. There's no luxury. There's no sitting back. There's nothing coming to you. Um, I think the Hollywood studio producer has some luxuries and. You know, obviously, there's some disadvantages, which is there's probably a lot of stories you don't get to tell, um, especially nowadays. You know, if it's not a comic book or a sequel, I think you know the studio producer probably is at a disadvantage in some of the stories they get to tell. And if they're an exclusive deal and there's a story they want to tell and the studio they're at passes, they're kind of SOL. And so um, there's obviously pros and cons to being a Hollywood producer and being an independent producer. Was it Chris Christopherson? Freedom isn't free. <laughs> I don't know if that um, was cool. But in the sense that the freedom is another word for nothing left to lose. Oh, I thought that was uh, Janis Joplin. No, that was Chris Christopherson, oh, okay. me and Bobby McGee, <laughs> which Janis Joplin sang. Okay, all right. Okay. I made five movies with Chris. <laughs> oh, you so did. So you picked okay. the wrong guy for the quote. Sorry. <laughs> well, luckily I know. I know cut. his repertoire by heart. <laughs> luckily, we cut. And he's a friend. Oh, nice. Okay. But my point with that was that even with with so-called yeah. freedom, it's you know that it comes yeah. at cost. So yeah. and then studio system maybe not as much freedom. Yeah. But but then I think it's the it. single best lyric written in an American song in the last fifty years. Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Yeah. The Janis Joplin story is fascinating too. Yeah. yeah. You never wanted to do something on her. I find the bio movies are really hard to do. Really. I think they're better served in documentaries. And the people that do them well, I have found them difficult. I, I prefer, because you, you, do you go rag, do you know, cradle to grave? Do you pick a slice of life? Do you, right. you know? That's true. And again, I am not, I don't believe because it happened makes it a good story. There are people that have great lives that belong in documentaries that don't belong in, I mean, look, I get pitched every week, if not every day, somebody mm. saying, I have an amazing story to tell you. And they tell me, a story of someone they knew or someone they read about and it is a probably a good 60 minutes piece or maybe even sure. a good documentary for Netflix but it's not a movie because a movie is different than a documentary 